We made it to Cuba. El son de Cuba. El son de Cuba traigo yo. Apúrense que el son llegó. El son de Cuba. El son de Cuba traigo yo. Porque la fiesta ya empezó. We flew to Cuba last minute. Was it worth it? Stay tuned to find out. El son de Cuba. El son de Cuba traigo yo. Porque la fiesta ya empezó. La fiesta sigue toda la noche con este ritmo tan especial. La gente baila, la gente goza con esa música original. We're Jay and Aubrey. We've been driving the Pan American Highway for over a year now. Last week we were in Mexico where our Mexican visa ran out. They only give you six months. So we ditched our van. We had to come up with a plan to reset our visa. Therefore, we took a quick trip to Cuba to support the Cuban people. as an American, but more on how we did that later. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. When we first arrived, our minds were blown. We didn't know what to think. When we went to Mexico, it was like taking a step back in time, maybe 30 years. Now that we've been in Cuba, it's like taking a step back in time 60 years. There's old classic vintage cars everywhere. The buildings and architecture are, you know, more old and dilapidated a little bit, but very beautiful. Yeah, so tell us about those cars a little bit more. There's no trade that goes in between the US and Cuba. So the cars that are here, they can't get parts for them. So they have to make it work with what they have. They might use a Ford motor in a Chevy car or however they gotta make it work, but they make it work and the cars actually look really good. And they're really proud of them. Like they'll come up to you and tell you the age of them and you know, they want really it. Cool. They definitely want you to know what they have. This is my car. It's the 1956 Buick. They wanna talk about it. There's absolutely some pride in everyone that drives the cars, they're very, well kept and well dressed, you can just feel the pride radiating off of them. one negative that I would have to say is the fumes like holy cow the, the smell sometimes is so overpowering and that's not necessarily it's not just from the old cars that's from every vehicle on the road the trucks the motorcycles the new cars the old cars it's pretty thick when you're driving down the road you can feel it in the back of your throat whoa look at that guy parking it right in there. It has been my dream to come here to Cuba. I actually picked this place when we were deciding where to go because this is where salsa dancing originated. I used to be a ballroom dancer before I met Jay and I learned to salsa dance in the Dominican Republic when I was 18 and just kept dancing ever since. And I used to do competitions in the United States. Coming here, I knew we had to get into that. So Jay got to have his first salsa dance lesson right here in Cuba. I'll let him tell you more how that went. <laughs> Not only was it my first 
salsa dance lesson. It was my first dance lesson, period. <laughs> so, there's my little disclaimer. <laughs> As we said, we flew here to support the Cuban people. Our dance teacher said she had been dancing since she was a little girl. It was quite interesting. Well, it was actually amazing. The cost of our dance lesson was $46 for both of us. And 23 a piece, that's pretty good. Bueno, sí. Basic. Yeah, that's the basic. Yeah. Okay, not, not for me. <laughs> and not all of that went to the dance teacher either. There was a couple other people involved that I think they got their portion as well. So they might have all ended up with the 10 bucks out but of it. What the did deal. you think of the experience, the dance experience? Oh, it was fun. Did you, it was fun, yeah. I was, did you learn anything or? I think so. <laughs> I, I, I did learn some steps, but I'll have to like keep practicing so that I don't forget them. The, the most interesting part is, I'm married to a dance teacher, <laughs> but we had to go pay for a dance lesson, which was a good thing. It's Because good. it's best when spouses don't teach yes. the other. Yes. It makes for a spicy relationship. It does, but it does add to your relationships. Take dance lessons because it will either bring you closer or you'll, you know, spread apart. It's almost like living in a van. It really tests your relationship and it can take it to a whole new level. And it gives it's a great me, workout. It gives me a much higher respect for people that can dance because it is hard. Like, it's not physically hard, it's mentally hard. Keeping with the beat, <laughs> making the right steps and the right moves, and then you get a little bit off, and then you get more. It's just, it's... The music. When she put the music on, he'd be like, I can't. It's way too fast. It's, Tough. Would you recommend it to other people? I would recommend it to other people and I look forward to maybe trying to Get a little bit better so that I feel a little more confident and maybe you know Trying to dance with my wife somewhere someday We're currently staying as you can see in the background here. This is our bedroom We're staying in a something called a Casa Particular. We're not staying in the big hotels here because we can't again more on that later. $50 a night, found it on Airbnb. I'll give you the information if you want. Leave a comment and I will give you all the details if you want to know anything that we talk about today. Uh, I'll give you a tour. We got the kitchen, living room. We got the air conditioned bedroom. Another balcony that goes out here. And the bathroom with a really cool window. Look at that. So neat. absolute best part of the whole place is the balcony. It's a great location. I just want to throw that in really quick. Oh, yeah. You can get places that are 20 bucks a night, 25 bucks a night. Don't know if I'd recommend that, <laughs> but it's there for you if you want it. Um, this place does have air conditioning in the bedroom, which is a bonus. Oh, yeah. Yes. Needed. Um, we're super glad. It's so hot here. It's pretty stuffy. The balcony. It's amazing. All those classic cars, they stop right underneath us, park right there. We get to look at them, watch like the little photo shoots that go on, and it looks right out onto the little place that we go for breakfast every morning, this little restaurant. It's amazing, and they have live music. So this, we couldn't have picked a better place to stay. Great price, great people, and the lady who owns this place is a Cuban. She lives right next door. If we ever need to change money over, she's right there for us. If we have any questions, she's right there for us. Highly recommend it. Shout out to our newest Patreons, Dwayne and Amy from Tennessee. And Chris and Stacy from Kansas. Thank you so much for believing in us and following along and being a part of our family. We love you guys. We love you. 
and a lot of things are within walking distance, which is nice because then you don't have to get in a cab and you can just walk to dinner, breakfast, go and see some tourist sites, all from this central location. It's been very convenient. We are in Old Havana. Habana Vieja is where we are located. I was gonna do that, but you, okay. did, it, you did it better. I like it. <laughs> it was sexier when you said it. Oh boy. Okay. Anyways. meals have actually been really good here uh, very reasonably priced I would say on average we spend $20 for the both of us with a nice tip included that's for breakfast lunch and dinner it's all kind of averaged out to be right in that $20 range um, with everything but we don't drink alcohol so that keeps our costs lower mm -hmm. no, it's good. Yeah, look at that. the Cuban peso we haven't spent more than $100 a day here, 100 US dollars a day. And what are we eating? One of the popular dishes is called Ropa Vieja. Ropa Vieja, which is like kind of like a shredded beef kind of thing. Almost kind of tastes like barbecued pork, but not really. And like fried plantains, rice and beans. Ropa Vieja, I want to touch on that a little bit because it is very good. And I think it's kind of a traditional meal here. It's like a slow cooked beef in a, a crock pot where it cooks all day. It just falls apart. Super good, tasty. Look at that. Look at this meat right here. Look at this. Look at that meat. Oh, you see that? Look, the swing in the bottle because it, it distracts the flies. Wow. You see that? Yeah. Wow. That's awesome, dude. That is so cool. So that's where you get your meat. Yeah. I don't know. You see his legs? Sabe mi sentimiento, siente mi amor. No me dejes sufrir, mamá, quita mi dolor. And we have tried twice now Cuban sandwiches here. Oh, yeah. And they're 100% not how they make them in the U.S. So if, you, if you've had a Cuban sandwich in the U.S., it's not the same. They don't put mustard on it and they add a couple more things. So. But they've been great. Con razón. Lo que quieres, te voy a dar todo mi corazón. Te voy a dar mi corazón. Eso. Como. Yesterday, we went on kind of like a tour of the city a little bit. Uh, we were able to get in a classic car, which is so cool. Coge lo que quieras, toma con razón. Lo que quieras, te voy a dar también mi corazón. It was called like a photo tour, and it ended up being 100 and $33 for both of us together. The photographer is a native Cuban who went to art school. The driver of the car was also uh, born and raised here. They were both very nice, very informational. You know, they, they told us a lot about Cuba. tour is we get 50 50 50 yes. high resolution photos of us all throughout old Havana with the car 
all these other historic But that places. was not what we were in it for. It was more so we wanted to get to know the photographer. It's cool to have the pictures, but I really wanted to spend time and get to know her, get to know him. Absolutely. It was it was yeah. just good all the way around. It I was mean, a neat there experience. Was, really yeah. neat. Yeah. We highly recommend that one. That really, it's memorable. Yeah. And we were with her for almost three hours. Yes. And the car. So the $130 might seem a little bit steep, but for what you get out of it, I we think it's We got a drink at the end too. You, yep, you get a free drink while you select your photos. Um, it was well worth it. The people were great, the experience was great, and we have some really cool photos as yeah. a souvenir of us. I mean, I think it's, it was just, yeah. it was an amazing time. My favorite picture is right at the end, we were by the Malacone, by the water, and these kids were sitting there and they really wanted to get in our picture, and that's my favorite picture that we got out of the whole thing. All right, here we are. We're filling out postcards for our Patreons because we have a Patreon tier where we send a postcard from every country we travel to. And this is actually a bonus because we had no intention on traveling here to Cuba, but we're here. And we're crossing our fingers that they make it. And if they don't, we got a backup plan too. Here's what the money looks like here. 1,000 Cuban pesos equals about three US dollars. Right, we're exchanging our money at 290 Cuban pesos per $1. And this was interesting because I did some research before we came here because I wanted to see what the exchange rate was for a US dollar. And everything that I found on the internet said that it was 24 Cuban pesos to one US dollar. And then we get here and it's 290 Cuban pesos to one US dollar. Take it as you want, but <laughs> I was shocked because I had one number in my head. It ended up being way different than that. Not everything you see on the internet is correct. So take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Yeah, some tips that we have that you should absolutely think about if you're coming here. Taxis from the airport, they only take US dollars or euros. They won't even take their own home currency and don't even change your money over. They would rather have American dollars. They don't want the Cuban peso. They want euros, they want Canadian dollars and US dollars. Yeah, they don't want their own money, so interesting. A lot of interesting things here. We could really get into many things, but we will keep it short yep. because sometimes our videos are quite long. All the money we've spent here has been to support the Cuban people. We've learned a few things that really took us back quite, I mean, just hit us hard. Um, we've made some friends here, and they told us that you're not allowed to build a boat with a motor here because they don't want you being able to leave. The boats that they do have, we saw were just blocks of styrofoam fastened together, maybe in a three foot by three foot square, and they would use scuba fins to propel themselves out into the water to catch fish. You're not allowed to surf on the North Shore of Cuba because of its geographic location to the United States. They think that you could paddle your surfboard to the US, which people probably have. Um, some of the rules here are hard to digest. Yeah, it's very eye-opening to see, and I, that's the reason I think everyone should come here to support the Cuban people and make it uh, really a, mean, a meaningful trip to come do that. On this trip also, we have been handing out toothbrushes. It was really neat to see. Yeah. It was really neat to see. We've been actually trying to give them to the children first. Yeah, so. we brought we still have some more to give out. We still have a bunch more, yeah. but we picked up as many as we could fit in our bag <laughs> before we left Mexico. 
because that's some of the things that they have a hard time getting here. Things that we take for granted, um, they really struggle to get. Toilet paper is one of them. Toothbrushes. Toothpaste. Yeah. Feminine hygiene products. Yeah, there's um, there's a, a long list of things. Band-aids. So. I don't even know if they've seen dental floss, shampoo, conditioner. Pen and paper, it's, it's a lot. We wanted to look up to see what the average wage was for Cubans. And so as a reference, we also looked up to see what the average wage was for Mexican people. Mexicans make, I think, five, five to 600 a month, five to $600 a month. Per month. Yeah. And Cuban people make 30 to $40 per month. I don't know how they're able to survive on that, but they're making it work. But it does show that things are... So anything, whatever you can bring. We were just, I mean, the other day, photograph I told you that was my favorite. The little kid, we had a water bottle with us and he's just like, can I have your water? I want your water. And it's just, they want anything. Anything because they don't have anything. Yeah. So. We think everyone should make a point to come here and visit Cuba to support the people and immerse yourself in the culture. It is really beautiful here and the people are great. Coming up in next week's video, we're gonna tell you exactly how we did this trip because it was not easy to put it together. We had to do a lot more than we thought we did. We thought we're just gonna book a trip to Cuba and we're just gonna go, but then we realized there was some roadblocks and some hurdles that you have to jump. There's some extra steps that need to be taken above and beyond just planning a vacation. Yes, stay tuned. We never know what, what's gonna happen. We never know where we're gonna be each week. Thank you for sticking around with us. It's the Barely Squeaking By channel. We love that you're here. <laughs> so we just wanna thank you for watching our show. More from Cuba next week. saying but um yeah yeah he's he's got a pee and so that dog. he's just gonna stop and he's on right the phone. on the street he's take the phone. a phone call and a yeah. pee all at once that's nice multitasking abilities there yeah that's it's, it's pretty interesting so far interesting so far yeah to put it lightly Where we made it to cuba? cuba we gotta go higher maybe 0.5 Oh, it won't do 0.5, will yeah, it? Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have Flip to. Flip it the other way? Yeah. That's so hard to aim. Whoa. Babe. Oh, he's gonna pee pee. Yeah, he's gonna pee pee. Ready? You do want it. me to reset? We made, made it, it to Cuba. Cuba. <laughs> You're okay. not like gay I, Babe, I know. Okay, ready? One, two, three. This is the stuff that didn't make the cut. Every day it's been really fun. We've been looking out our balcony here and we're watching these people do these two kids and they're like working with these pigeons i don't know what they're doing i don't know enough about homing pigeons to really tell you what they're doing but we can see that they're on their rooftop and they do have some pigeon cages and they tend to them quite frequently yeah it's really cool it's their hobby or their passion it's fun to watch being in a setting where there's multiple walks of life around you and you have a balcony oh, that you just get to enjoy everybody's life as you enjoy your life is kind of fun. Um, it's a little creepy stalker-ish because um, we're always just watching all the people, but it's fun. Okay. Wow. Okay, you card out yet? No. <laughs> I really think everybody should travel outside of whatever town you have grown up in. You need to travel out and see things because it really, it makes you appreciate where you come from. I don't know, it gives you gratitude for everything in life, I think. Just step out of your comfort zone. If you live yeah. in the country, go to the city. If you live in the city, go to the country. If you're from America, if you're from the United States, <laughs> Go to Latin America or Europe or wherever, Africa. Um, Go do it. It just, changes yeah. you. It changes everything that it you does. think. One, two, three. We made it to... <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. We flew to Cuba. You always touch your nose. Sorry. 